Valentine's Day, the season of love. Yeah, I call it an obvious cash grab for card and candy companies, but honestly, Valentine's Day never really bothered me. If you don't like to celebrate it, yeah, I, I understand, but I'll welcome any excuse to be ridiculously unabashedly corny. And hey, even if you don't have a special someone, it, it's still nice to get cards from friends, right? Well, anyway, in the spirit of the season, I'll be counting down the top ten most romantic tropes. This was a tough list to make. In perusing the love wiki on TV tropes, I discovered that most of the cliches and romance stories are things I don't actually find romantic. This list required a little digging, so I hope you'll enjoy... The Top 11 Most Romantic Tropes Number 11 This is a top 11 list because I wanted to be as universal as possible with the tropes I chose to put here, but I just had to start out with one that is very, very personal. The Geeky Turn On and partly I did this because this sounds like it shouldn't exist. Are there really people out there who are more turned on by potential matchmaking obscure references to something smart or nerdy than by their physical appearance? Yeah. Even recently I can remember watching Corbin Blue on Dancing with the Stars and everybody was all, Oh, Corbin, he's so hot! And I was thinking, yeah, he's easy on the eyes, that's nice, whatever. And then he did a tribute to Game of Thrones. In that instant, he became more attractive to me than he had ever been. The geeky turn-on is more than a myth, my friends, and its effects are nigh inescapable. Your mileage may vary, of course, so let's get back to the list. Number 10. The Fettered. I didn't specify what kind of romantic tropes. Being romantic isn't just about candlelit dinners and moonlit walks on the beach. It can also mean an idealized view of reality. And that's what the fettered is all about. It's literally what the fettered is all about. This is a character whose actions are defined by a strong moral code. Note that the fettered isn't a zealot who needs everyone around him to adopt his beliefs in order to validate them. For the fettered, the point isn't being right at all times. It's doing right at all times. I will never, ever turn my back on people who need me. Number 9. Opposites Attract. Yes, it's just about the oldest cliche in the book and the quickest way to cheap dramatic tension. When done poorly, it can leave you wondering what these two people even see in each other at all. But when done well, it can be a more nuanced way to say, You complete me. She's everything I'm not. She's my other half. Without her, I'm not old. Relationships need common ground to work. That's just a given. But it would be a dull relationship indeed if you ended up with someone who was just a carbon copy of yourself. You'd think the dreamers would find the dreamers and the realists would find the realists, but more often than not, the opposite is true. You see, the dreamers need the realists to keep them from soaring too close to the sun. And the realists, well, without the dreamers, they might not ever get off the ground. Number 8. Sweet and Sour Grapes Real life rarely lines up with our expectations. Things just don't go the way we hoped or planned or wanted. Isn't it nice when that happens to take solace in the idea that it's all for the best, that we are exactly where we are meant to be in life, and that the lot we've been given truly is better for us than what we actually wanted? Then, and only then, can we really have everything we ever wanted. Oh, I looked into that philosopher you quoted, Jagger, and you're right, you can't always get what you want, but as it turns out, if you try sometimes, you get what you need. Number seven. The Hope Bringer. This isn't really turning out to be an exciting list, but it is about the most romantic tropes, not necessarily the hottest or the sexiest. And what's more romantic in the sense of an idealized worldview than a person who gives you reason to hope again. And take it from someone who has been to some very, very hopeless places. The belief that better times lie ahead is a powerful one indeed. And the person who can help you believe that such times are possible is a real treasure. You give people hope. 
Number 6. The Grand Romantic Gesture For when flowers and chocolates just won't cut it. Sometimes they work, sometimes they don't, mostly depending on the receptiveness of the recipient. Best applied in a more personal way to show that it's not just about the gift, it's about a deep emotional connection with the other person. A muffin, a pastrami sandwich, and a bag of chips. And I know it's way past lunchtime, but I love you. It's more and more each day. I love you, Lily. Happy New Year. Number five. Sort of related to the star-crossed lovers, the couple that's always being told nobody thinks it will work has a lot of obstacles to overcome. At face value, they're all wrong for each other and have nothing in common, and everybody knows they're just going to crash and burn. Which, of course, makes it all the more satisfying when they end up making it and living happily ever after. And this isn't even restricted to romance. This is the trope of the little engine that could, the garage band that became rock stars, the startup company that became a multi-million dollar corporation. And yes, even the couple everyone was rooting against who earns their happy ending. We love underdogs. When they win, we win. Nobody really thinks it will work, do they? No. We just described every great success story. Number four. Will they or won't they is a common trope invoked to create dramatic attention between the main character and the obvious love interest. Because after all, it's vastly more interesting to see a never-ending dance between two people who obviously have unresolved sexual tension than to show the pitfalls and complications of just living a life together. Right? They do is the conclusion of a romantic arc where the couple definitely ends up together. But why just leave it as a conclusion? Why not explore what happens after Happily Ever After? There are countless stories to be told about just sharing a life together, without resorting to the storytelling equivalent of running repeatedly into a brick wall. I now pronounce you man and wife. You may kiss the bride. Oh. <laughs> Number three. I want my beloved to be happy. This is, in essence, when a character says, I want him to have what he wants, even if it means you instead of me. It can be realizing that your crush is in love with someone else, or that they simply want something that isn't you. Either way, you have to let them go. This is the last time you'll ever see me. <laughs> hey, yeah! In his book, The Four Loves, C.S. Lewis categorizes love into four types. Storge, for affection and familial love, Filio for friendship and companionship, Eros for romance, and Agape for unconditional love. Agape is the love that motivates you to put the needs of the one you care for above your own, even if there's nothing in it for you, or in fact, you end up suffering for it. <laughs> It is regarded as the highest expression of love. You want it back? No. I want her to be happy. No matter what that means, I want her to find someone who will treat her with all the love she deserved from me. Now that's a prayer. Number two. Love redeems. Love is not a sissy emotion. Love is powerful. It can drive even the sanest person to do all sorts of crazy things. It's a trope as old as time and, when executed well, can lead to a convincing heel face turn for the big bad. It applies to every single one of the four loves, as the redemption can come in the form of family, friends, romance, and even agape. This trope is basically the crux of the entire Harry Potter series, where Word of God has stated that the big bad was made of so much pure, undiluted evil because he was the product of a loveless relationship. Meanwhile, the dragon's redemption arc was based entirely around the fact that he loved the hero's mother. Everyone who has even the slightest capacity to love is treated as redeemable, while those who don't are beyond hope. I know you have a lot of pain and confusion inside of you over the things you did as a Digimon Emperor. But you're not that person anymore, Ken. You gotta fight, Ken. You're stronger than that. Don't let fear and guilt rule your life anymore. We're here with you. 
And the number one most romantic trope is... Grow old with me. Because really, what could be more romantic than finding that one special person you want to spend the rest of your life with? This trope is essentially saying, whatever plans I had before you came along, throw those out the window. You are now the most important one in my life. Whatever adventures I have from here on out, I want to have them with you. Your happiness is even more important than mine. I will be able to face any hardship that comes my way as long as you are by my side. And when you find that person you can grow old together with, truly, you will have the happiest of all endings. I want to grow with you. I'm eternally optimistic, wishing you a very happy Valentine's Day. L is for the way you look at me. O is for the only one I see. V is very, very extraordinary. In his book, The Four Loves, C.S. Lewis categorizes love into four types, 